Hello everybody, it's Destiny Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the uh, most newly reforged tier 10, the E100. Now, the E100 has been in the game for a very long time. I've had this thing since year one. Um, more than likely, I'm going to be posting a description, well, a link in the description, or maybe not even that. I'm just going to include it at the, at the end of the video, to where you guys can actually go back and watch my review of the tank uh, before the buff. If you guys want to jump back and watch that to get an idea how it performed before the buff and then see how it's still doing now. Um, honestly, with the most recent improvements that they have brought to this tank, they have done a really good job at making this thing just absolutely phenomenal and performing a lot better than it has in the past. Uh, there are a couple of flaws, however, with what they've done with the armor model. Uh, one of the biggest flaws being that it, it's just a minor overview and... In all honesty, it doesn't make a massive difference. It's just the under bar of the turret um, is originally 310 over on PC, and this is to help prevent heat spam. But, I mean, if you're loading the heat rounds, you're going to be pinning this spot. So, really, it's it's not that big of an issue, um, especially if you're using your gun depression. As you can see here, that entire um, bottom bar is 270, and then up in PC, we're looking at 300. The only thing that this really does is allow you to get a good decent angle on your opponents and just make that armor substantially thicker so right now we're looking at 370 so with the 270 armor we're probably looking at maybe 280 to maybe 300 millimeters of armor right here so it can it still is considered a weak spot but really hitting that spot in a close quarters brawling situation with constant moving um, can be pretty hard depending on the caliber of your gun you will probably be better off aiming at the 40 millimeter top plate if you got a 122 or bigger uh, being able to overmatch that entire top section of the tank but primarily the buff that they have done to this tank they have made this thing yeah i mean look at this at 270 up in the turret here basically just aiming for the uh top deck here trying to hit that little 150 bar on top is kind of your goal now or loading heat rounds and trying to score and then a 270 cheek here. Um, PC has it at 310. So this is full on green almost no matter the angle that you're at. Uh, but the honestly, turret, it's doing really good. Um, I have two replays for you guys today. And before we jump into that, I actually want to jump over to the actual reforge. So just a turret frontal armor from 250 to 270. Uh, the 12.8 reload, they increase from 14.3 to 12.5. Aim time from 2.9 to 2.5. You're not going to need an enhanced gun lane drive for this tank. Um, a gun rammer, you can get your reload down to 9.3 to 9.1 if you're using ventilation as well. I don't use ventilation on my E100. I like the advanced toolbox because if I get tracked, I repair it quickly. I get back up and moving again and just keeping everything going. And then with the big boy gun, they increase the aim time. Uh, no reload buff here. Honestly, I don't think the big boy gun ever needs a reload. It's already performing super fantastic the way that it is. So first up, uh, Pilsen. Uh, Pilsen is one of those maps that you're going to find yourself in a couple of scenarios that, you know, if you're in a medium tank, you can kind of take the middle section at G6 to get some early cross shots. Um, I have taken a few tank destroyers into that position and had basically 850 guaranteed within the first 30 seconds of the match. And yeah, it's just um, E100 right now, though. With the small gun, the small gun is now competitive, while beforehand, the reload on the small gun was just not much of an advantage over the big gun. And um, some people are saying that don't use the small gun. I honestly recommend to use the small gun for that rate of fire, because if you're able to fire quick enough, and you're able to help your team get tracking shots, and you're able to lock down opponents, that is going to be making the biggest difference, especially if you're wolf packing it in the E100 and there's two of you, and you're both running the small gun, one person fires, you wait five seconds, the second person fires, and then you just start to fire in between cycles. That way you can perma-track the opponent sitting out in front of you, and it can be extremely devastating. Um, right now I am doing my play session with the E100. Um, so far today, I believe I've invested maybe 15 or so matches in the E100. It's not a whole lot, but it is a decent amount. And with the turret armor... Um, you're going to be wanting to angle your turret armor as much as you can, trying to hit the sweet spots. Um, if you need to, rewind the video, take a look at the armor model that I showed off. That is the sweet spot that I had the turret at. And um, even against heat rounds, it, it's going to be performing fantastic. Even though you still have that low bar that's kind of weak, 
and then the armor overall up top against 340 heat pin you'll be performing pretty decent um, against anything above 340 heat pin however you're going to want to be uh, hitting a wall and using those uh, extreme angles to keep your turret defended as much as you can but so far I'm enjoying it. It is feeling fantastic. It is nice to see that they finally put the 270 on the turret like I've wanted them to do for the longest time. It just feels amazing. Right here, making a shout out. Always load HE. I love to take HE. And right here, I'm loading it in. And I'm just going to have a really good shot here in a split second. Boom. 572 in the back of the E5. Uh, one thing I would like to see them add, however, is... Whenever I use the big gun, I like to use the advanced reload. And because of how they have the system put together right now, I can't use the advanced reload unless I want to spend 250000 every single time that I change out my gun. So I did spend some silver today to be able to swap it out twice uh, during my play session with the tank. Which is kind of sad that I have to spend silver and I can't spend 10 gold to demount an equipment or have like... A secondary save for equipment that way I'm able to have multiple loadouts on equipment to have that suited up better so I I would like to see them implement something like that um, honestly I think the easiest one would be a, a demounting system where we can outright just remove the equipment for 10 gold and then have a voucher for it uh, rather than paying a silver back because that's from what I hear the entire reason why they removed it in the first place because you were able to demount consistently and you weren't spending money on silver or anything else. But if we had a demount and you got a voucher back, that would be the best way to go. Um, along with that, I've already given away two Passantes for you guys. Uh, mindful, I hope you enjoy the one that I gave you earlier this morning. And the second guy, his name is a brain fart. I'm going to have to look it up again. Uh, more than likely, I'll leave it down in the comments once he accepts my friend request and he's going to be getting it. But um, other than that, uh, Basante guys... I want you guys to play a few matches inside that tank. You know, don't expect to perform super, super good. Get a feel for it before the uh, before they ever decide to buff it. That way you can leave your opinion of it down in the comment section of this video. And I'll be able to use that in a later video with uh, what you guys felt about that tank during the time that you played it. Um, other than that, E100 right now. The small gun with the rate of fire. You're able to get in, move quickly. Uh, you're taking off chunks, 490 alpha, along with that 246 standard pin, and then you have uh, 311 premium pin. Uh, the big boy gun, we're looking at 246 standard pin, uh, 334 heat pin, along with 85 millimeters of high explosive penetration with 950 alpha. Honestly, they didn't really need to change a whole lot on the E100. The aim time, the reload, those are much appreciated. The turret armor buff, absolutely love it. Um, another thing I love is that this is the end of the match here. Um, I've been able to get a lot of early shots, pulling out and peeking and then backing off. Wasn't really getting focused out, so it's down to a 4 versus 4, and I'm a full health E100 inside this lobby. Being full health at the end of the game can be extremely devastating, especially since both these mediums are just not ready for this thing. It's also a ramming behemoth, controlled impact. Uh, as I said with the, uh, yes, yes, as I said with the Tiger 2, and here I am trying to angle again, trying to get the turret out of the way of the, uh, Death Star that I proxy spotted just a second ago, and I wasn't able to get that angle just right, but it's not gonna matter, this was a good game, um, 6,000, 42 damage dealt, 410 assisted, 1,100 blocked, uh, into the match hit, still full health, I didn't really take any damage until the Death Star decided to pin the side of my turret, but... Honestly, the way that the turret's put together now, it is a lot stronger than some people will think. Uh, heat rounds in the front of it, they are bouncing a little bit, not a whole lot if you're maxing out your 7 degrees of gun depression that you have. It still is struggling just a tad bit. Because whenever you max out your gun depression, you're looking at about 350. Uh, near the top of the plate, you're looking at about 360. And then closer down low, about 340 millimeters of effective armor whenever you're maxing out your gun depression inside the E100. So as of right now, it is filling fantastic. Uh, this is a match on Himmel's Dwarf. You know, we're pulling out the two city maps because E100 performs really good in those close quarter situations in the city maps. Um, for me, these are my best matches that I had today. I had a couple others, but I didn't include them because if I had them in here, 
uh, this video would end up to be like an hour long. So, a few matches in it. Honestly, the way this is put together, I am not disappointed in the slightest. This is going to be bringing the E100 back into the meta, without a doubt. I am a little disappointed about the arm bar on the bottom, though, since it's not 310. But at the same time, it's just a little bit of an oversight and nothing you got to worry about. Just because if you're maxing out your gun depression, you're you're not going to really worry about that little arm bar on the bottom because the enemies aren't going to be seeing it a whole lot. The only time that arm bar is going to be affecting you is in brawling situations and getting in close and trying to just maintain. But then again, if they can pin that, uh, more than likely they're a taller tank and they have a gun caliber above 122, which means that they can overmatch your top armor. But if you're close enough, it is really hard to aim down to be able to hit those spots. Now, here with the big gun, this is what I'm talking about. I actually swapped out to advanced reload. That way I can swap freely with shells, loading in the HE 387 into the Andre the Giant just to get some early damage. And this Type 59 wasn't having it. I wanted to pull up and he didn't want me to pull up. So I'm trying to get out of his way, but he's auto driving in the mean reverse. So I kind of just said, I'm, I'm going up there. There's no stopping me. So, another thing about the E100, some people are talking about the gun not being a fan of it just because it's not performing well and everything else. But right here, loading the heat round, I'm testing the side of the Andres turret because I haven't really seen a whole lot of Andres or M449 tier 10s of the French heavies. Uh, we're seeing a lot more of those pop up since they've been rebalanced. Right here, we're going to be loading in an AP round. Um, the top armor of the tier 10 French and Andre the Giant, it's only 40 millimeters. So with this big boy 15 centimeter gun, 150 millimeters, we are able to overmatch that deck of the engine on the back of Andre. And since, you know, a lot of people get comfortable thinking that, you know, they have this super strong side armor, it's always nice to try and find those little shots that you can try and get in to be able to deal a little bit of extra damage. And right here, fired a little bit too early. Um, with the aim time improvements on the gun as well, I don't really feel much of a problem whenever it comes down to mid-range sniping and trying the snapshots anymore. Uh, beforehand, you'd want to sit for a second, you'd want that to aim in for a moment, and then you'd want to fire. And this shot right here, oh, that is a devastating blow to the back of that bat chat. Now, my, my personal opinion of the E100, this is definitely going to be bringing it back into the meta without a doubt. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of these in the queue. A lot of people who have grinded these tanks out and beforehand were a little bit disappointed with how they were performing. Um, honestly, this is now a grind that you're going to be wanting to get done. The entire tech tree with the VK-36, the Tiger-1, the Tiger-2, the E-75, everything else that they have done is just absolutely fantastic. This is going to be a fantastic line to grind down now for newer players. And I believe I'm probably going to be recommending this line for newer players to grind down. Just because the tier 10 is going to be solid. Um, sure, it's a little bit on the slower side, but I don't feel like the meta is changing to the point where it's all about the speed. If you can take super heavies and lock down certain maps, uh, speed by that point is a disadvantage. Quite the amount. Just because these tanks are going to be outperforming on these smaller maps. Um, for instance... Once Inksk is back, once Erlenberg is back, um, another map would be uh, Great Wall that was recently added back. I find that these um, German heavies are actually performing extremely good on Great Wall. And Himmelsdorf, of course, this is probably the best matchmaking for this tank. Pilsen, another fantastic map for this tank. Um, even Prokhorovka, if you play it correctly, this tank is devastating. And with the 400 base meters of V-range that you have, you're able to boost it up a whole crap ton. Even with me dropping optics on my secondary build right here, I still have 465 meters of V-range with a premium consumable and situational awareness. Um, not using ventilation. So the first build with the 128, we were running optics, loader, and toolbox. Um, the second build here, we're running, we dropped the optics for advanced reloader, that way we can swap shells freely without really um, sacrificing too much. You know, dropping the V-range down does kind of hurt, but I find that if you can switch freely with the big boy gun, 
that actually helps you utilize what this tank is able to do. And here, tried to snap a shell as quick as we could, but we weren't able to get it in the side of the artillery. Sadly. Death to Artie. But, as of right now, um, yeah, you guys, if, if you've played E100 during the buff, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, personally, I think it is just fantastic and really hard to take care of. Uh, Panzer 7s, by the way, the one that I'm shooting at right now. Uh, there was one that I went up against earlier today that I just could not dig him out, and he uh, did 6,000 damage, killed me, and killed a couple other guys. So, good player right there. Fantastic execution inside the Panzer 7. Panzer 7, if played right, is just another fantastic tank that is very hard to take down. So, the second match, the reason why I'm choosing this one is because it's showing knowledge of ammunition types. Swapping back to AP rounds, because AP can go through obstacle, heat, and high explosive. They cannot go through obstacles. So loading the AP round to be able to shoot it through the car to hit the target. Along with that, we showed off a little bit of overmatching and extremely great lead with high explosive rounds into the back of a bat chat. And I'm not sorry, bat chat. That to me, um, I saw that shot and I was just like, wow, I I I feel mean, but at the same time, I would do it again if I could. Along with that, I was playing with Toto and Blade in these matches as well. And just so far, honestly, fantastic execution inside these tanks. They are definitely performing fantastic. And I'm going to start working on trying to get the 3 mark now on the E100. But I doubt that I'm really going to worry about it too much just because 3 marking a tank doesn't mean a whole lot because of how I play. I like to go for the win. I take flanks that sometimes I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of damage. And... I play a lot of other different tanks all at the same time that playing the same tank back to back to back to back to back to back. I just lose interest on it extremely quickly. So other than that, you guys, um, E100 as of right now, this tank is performing phenomenal. Um, next thing up, let's actually go ahead, jump back over to the desktop here. Same thing. If it's coming over a hill, it's only got 30 millimeters of armor underneath shooting into the tracks. This is what a lot of German heavies suffer from. If they're coming over, no problem to take them down. Along with that, if they are definitely turning a corner and they're holding that extreme angle, you are better off aiming for that top arm bar. Or if you have a bigger gun than 122 millimeters, aiming at like 122 or bigger, trying to hit the top armor of the E100. E100 does not have much of little top bars on it. There is a little bit of a slant here coming up just a tad bit so if you do try to face hug it uh, you will find that to be a little bit difficult to handle um, along with that just the way this thing is performing right now the over angle that you're able to achieve inside this with all the additional spaced armor on the side um, yeah not much to say except for I am enjoying playing this tank a whole lot another thing is if you guys are gonna be coming over to hill to provide spotting for your team Come over at an extreme angle. Uh, super heavy armor. So you can play a little bit of a support role if you want to get in the front row and provide a little bit of spotting. Try and get that assist damage to help you with your mark or to help you make a little bit of silver inside the tank or try to get that mastery badge. Um, other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if there's anything else that you guys would like to see um, tomorrow, more than likely I'm going to be working on the E75, getting a few matches inside that and showing that off for you guys, but um, what I would like to see Wargaming add now is a way to demount equipment that way I'm not spending an outrageous amount of silver every single time that I want to try out something different on a tank so I'm able to get things down. Um, along with that, the crew is the same one that you guys saw inside the Tiger 2 yesterday so, yeah I, I, honestly, fantastic tank right now um, other content creators are saying that it, it's kind of just disappointing. I don't think so. I think right now this is the best that the German heavies have been in a long time. Germans have gotten a lot of love, except for the E50M line. I still want to see those cheeks buff from 80 to 120 to 150 on the tier 10, because that is what helps prevent heat spam. And still, if you go up against those tanks and you load the heat rounds, they are still suffering just as much. But the E50, knowing the way that tank's put together, there might not be another buff on that line for a very long time because a lot of unis play those tanks and I enjoy playing them. The E50, I still own it. I still play it quite a bit. The E50M, I play it quite a bit. I perform good in it just because of mobility and everything else that it has to offer. 
But if they redid the turret, my playstyle inside the tank would change dramatically. And yeah, I would be a little bit more aggressive with it. But right now, I have to slow down just a tad bit to be able to get things done. So, you know, it, it is what it is. They, they can buff it however they want to buff it. But I'm going to be here to criticize them. And everyone else, I hope. So other than that, you guys have a great day. I'm out of here. Catch you all next time.